What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a tip on how to intercept a glide slope from above. So this will typically happen if you're flying on VATSIM or you're in some type of busy event and maybe the controller forgets about you or you got crossing traffic underneath you and for some reason they can't give you an approach clearance right away and you end up getting a little bit high on the approach. What ends up happening is you have a tendency to stay high, get unstable, and you might have to go around or in the sim world, you may force a bad landing. In real life, we have what's called stable approach criteria and at a certain altitude depending on your operator you must be stable and within those parameters some operators are a thousand feet some are 500 feet for a basic general rule of thumb i think if you're in the sim here you should aim for a thousand feet to be stable now what do i mean by stable being stable is going to be in reference to your airspeed and your altitude and configuration of the aircraft so by a thousand feet you need to aim to be geared down in the landing configuration, maybe flaps full to go, but typically you want to have your checklist complete, so flaps should be in the landing configuration. Landing gear down and speed on your approach speed, or there is a window that typically ranges from minus 5 to plus 10, or even in some operators, plus 20. And that just gives you some leeway. You know, if you are fast, if you're coming down from a high approach angle, from a glide slope from above, you are still within the parameters and you can continue the approach as long as you are trending to that stable criteria. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to simulate this for you here on the ILS approach into Dallas-Fort Worth. Now, this happens in real life sometimes, and it happens a lot on VATSIM, I've noticed the last time I did an FNO, I was left a little bit high on an approach. And I think this is an important tip that you guys will be able to learn and you can apply it across all three different airplanes. So the first step to getting your aircraft stable and capturing at a glide slope from above is being aware that you are in a position to be high and fast. That is the first step to being in a stable configuration for landing is your knowledge and understanding that you're in a position to be in high and fast. So right now the aircraft is at 3000 feet here. You can see we're going to be flying the ILS 17 center approach in a Dallas Fort Worth. Now being able to understand the position of the aircraft, you have to be thinking ahead of the airplane at all times. By looking at my approach chart here, I know that if I were to be on glide slope at the final approach fix, as indicated here by this Maltese cross over Jiffy intersection, the aircraft should be at 2300 feet on the glide slope. You can see that's also indicated here by GS2300. Right now, the aircraft is currently at 3000 feet. Not a super big deal. We can see here Zing, the intersection prior to Jiffy, is at or above 3,000. This is very common, as in real life, you'll probably be vectored around the intersection of Zing when you're at 3,000 feet. You know the controller is probably going to bring you in here at an angle. Right now, the aircraft's position is right about here, parallel to the Zing intersection, so I'm going to vector myself around to Zing, and we're going to continue to fly the approach. Now, you got to understand that there are two separate approach clearances and it's very imperative that you understand the difference between both of them. The first approach clearance is the one that we hear most commonly, which is you are cleared for the approach or cleared ILS approach 17 center. When you get cleared approach, you are now cleared to follow lateral track and vertical track such as the glide slope. If you get a clearance that says intercept the localizer and continue the approach or intercept the localizer, maintain 3000, that is giving you a clearance to follow the lateral navigation only, but not the vertical navigation such as the glide slope in this case. So we would have to maintain our current altitude or assigned altitude from air traffic control, but we can track the localizer. In that case, we will press the localizer push button instead of the approach push button. So I'm gonna unpause the sim here. We're gonna to continue to travel parallel to our downwind of our landing airport. Now. I'm going to simulate that we're kind of at a speed restriction here of 230 knots. In real life, I tend to not like to fly around at 230 knots or even 210 knots. I'll keep it at 250 or whatever my assigned speed is until I get a base turn. Once I know I'm turning base, I like to slow the aircraft to 180 knots if practical. Now in this situation, we're going to go ahead and simulate that right here. We're going to say we get a uh, fly heading 030. So I know I'm kind of on a dog leg base turn as he's going to vector me into zinc so right now if applicable i'm going to go ahead and just bring that speed back to 180 knots some guys like 210 or 200 you can do that but if, from my experience of many years flying this airplane 180 knots is almost a fail safe speed so 
There's my VFE next, minus 10 knots. We'll go ahead and extend flaps 1. And once we get to VFE minus 10, we can extend flaps 2. So there is nothing wrong with flying at 200 or 210 knots, but the problem is, as you can see here at our current weight, if I was flying at 210 knots, I still am not able to get flaps 2 out should I need to slow down in a hurry. That is why I prefer 180 knots. It's just a fail-safe speed. 250 downwind, as soon as you get a base turn, slow that airplane to 180. All right, there's our VFE next minus 10. We'll go ahead and select flaps two. We'll simulate a turn here. Airbus one, turn right, heading 070, intercept the localizer. Okay, so we're gonna turn heading 070 and intercept the localizer only. So I'm gonna press the localizer push button. Right here, you can see the local is blue. I should have my LS button on there so we can see the glide slope and localizer course as well. And that was kind of a bad vector on myself. I'm going to give myself a few more miles and then we'll make a 45 degree turn here. All right, so we have our clearance. We have our localizer armed. We're going to fly at about a 50, 60 degree intercept angle here to join the localizer, which is a pretty steep angle. I'm going to continue to change that, maybe make it 120. A good controller will probably get you a nice vector right along to that intersection line there to zing. Sometimes it's a little bit before, sometimes it's a little bit after. Okay, right here, I'm gonna pause the airplane, pause the sim. Right here is when I need to start thinking ahead. I'm at 3,000 feet, I have a localizer clearance only. I know 3,000 feet is safe and totally fine because Zing is at 3,000, we're approaching Zing from the outside, so we really aren't in a position to be high yet. However, I know as soon as I pass the Zing intersection, if I don't have an approach clearance, there is a very likely possibility that I'm going to be a little bit high on the glide slope when I do get my approach clearance, and I'm gonna have a hard time being at 2300 over Jiffy on the glide slope. All right, so how do I know this? There's a little simple mental math that I've been using throughout my streams, and if you haven't caught on now, I'm gonna go over it one more time. And that's the basic three degree rule. So by looking at my approach chart here, if I'm at 3,000 feet and I wanna cross Jiffy at 2,300 feet, I know my net loss of altitude is only 700 feet. Let's multiply that by three, yeah, you get 21. Move the decimal over, you get 2.1. That is the distance at a three degree path that would be required to make a three degree descent angle from Zing down to Jiffy and be on altitude over Jiffy. Looking at my distance between the two waypoints, I'd say it's only 2.2 miles. So unless I get a clearance from the approach controller at or prior to Zing, when the aircraft is 2.1 miles or greater from Jiffy, I am going to end up being high because the second I am within 2.1 miles to Jiffy intersection, I'm already starting to get above that standard three degree glide path and I'm starting to get a little bit high. So that is where the preparation needs to take place. So now we must talk about what are we going to do when we know we are high on the glide slope. So there's a few steps that we need to take, and I'm going to go over them here because it happens very fast once you are in the position flying the approach. So when tracking inbound on the localizer and you are above the glide slope, make sure you are in configuration of flaps two and slow to your selected speed. So I'm already in selected speed. If you were in managed speed, whatever you're in, at this point, if you think there's a possibility that you're gonna be high, go ahead and select speed, dial it back to 180. If you know you're gonna, if you really know you're gonna be high, you might even wanna try 160 or 170. Personal preference, I like about 180, unless there's a few, there's a handful of approaches that where I know I'm going to be high. I even like 170, sometimes even 160. Tampa is one of those airports in real life where you, you might want to slow down a little bit early. The next thing you want to do is make sure your FCU altitude is above the current altitude. So right now, my FCU altitude is at 3,000. What I'm going to do next to get down to the glide slope is use a vertical speed mode. Now, for me to use vertical speed mode down, I have to have an FCU altitude either below me or above me. I can't vertical speed down here when I'm at 3,000. The reason that you want to change your FCU altitude and you want to make sure it's above your current altitude is you don't want to have an altitude capture happen while you are already high because that's just going to make the problem worse and make you even higher. So if I were to set 2,300 here for Jiffy and I use vertical speed down, once I get close to 2,300, we're going to go into out star and the airplane's going to begin to level off and I might still be high. So to remedy that, I'm going to set that up. Now, if the missed approach altitude is above you, that's even better. I would set missed approach altitude. But for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and set 4,000 feet so I know I can use vertical speed down and get to the glide slope. 
All right, we'll continue to fly inbound here. We've got 4,000 set. I'm anticipating being high on the glide slope here. But as we stand right now, we're actually not high and we're still in a pretty good position. Once we are established on the localizer and that we are high, we are going to use the vertical speed on the FCU. We're going to use a descent rate of approximately 1,500 up to 2,000 feet per minute. Now, it's important that you understand if you are at that 2,000 foot per minute, there is a tendency, depending on your exact situation, your weight, the type of aircraft you're flying, the density altitude, the wind, there is a tendency that even at 2,000 feet per minute, your speed will continue to increase towards VFE or your flap never exceed speed. So if you want to start out using 1,500 feet per minute, that's a good mark. 1800 feet per minute and as you gain experience with your aircraft you'll understand which weights and which airports that you really should stay away from that 2000 feet per minute mark here in dallas i'm going to go straight to 2000 feet per minute we're in a relatively light a320 i'm i'm confident in my ability to get a slow down so i'm going to use the 2000 feet per minute out of the get-go but you don't want to use anything more than 2000 feet per minute because then you will start increasing your speed as you're descending and that's just going to make matters worse for meeting that stable approach criteria all right so you can see now that we've intercepted the localizers indicated by the low star the airbus does have smart localizer capture so even if you go at 90 degrees it should capture it and not overshoot you can see that working out good here do have a little bit of a tailwind coming into play so now i know that i really got to be johnny on the spot with my vertical speed i'm in flaps position two i've got 180 knots selected here comes my glide slope i have not received an approach clearance yet i know i'm going to be getting one momentarily so i'm going to go ahead and preemptively select vertical speed 2000 on the fcu You're flying along, VATSIM is doing VATSIM things, and they forget about you, and all of a sudden they say, oh my gosh, Airbus One, you are cleared for the approach from a 17 center. All right, so I'm going to freeze frame this here real quick because the next sequence of events is going to happen very fast. You may actually have to watch it over a few times so you can see what I am doing and where I'm manipulating the flight controls. One other thing I forgot to mention, and depending on the airplane whether you're in a 320 or a 321 the spoid brake can be a useful tool depending on your configuration but again varying on the type of airbus that you're flying you may have a speed brake limitation uh, depending on the configuration of the aircraft but if you can use it use it and it'll help you get down even faster and continue to slow down so right now here we go vertical speed 2000 push for managed speed landing gear down don't be late on the on that as I continue to descend, I see my VFE is still coming down, so I'm still decreasing speed. I'm going to go ahead and extend flaps three. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach push button, so when I do get close to the glide slope, I know that it does, in fact, capture. See, I'm increasing speed. I'm going to go ahead and decrease my descent rate, maybe 1,700 feet per minute here. Hopefully, that will help slow my increase in airspeed. Use a little speed brake to help you out as well. Here comes my glide slope. There's VFE next, minus 10. We'll go ahead and extend flaps full. Speed brake is still out. Make sure you stow that before if you're in a 320. Look, glide slope star. I've now intercepted the glide slope. So here we go. This is how fast that has happened. In that few seconds of time we have descended from a high altitude on the glide slope we've now captured the glide slope and we have still continued to slow down this is one of those phrases where you hear you can't slow down and go down at the same time and for the most part that is true but there are certain situations and tools that we have in the airbus here that will help us achieve slowing down and going down within a certain window of opportunity and being on a glide slope and being able to configure to the landing configuration is one of those windows of opportunity. It's also important to note that once I get glide slope star, I need to make sure I come back to my FCU and I set the missed approach altitude because I'm already kind of riding the wave here with my airplane on the approach. If I do have to go around, I wanna make sure that we are 
ahead of the airplane at all times. The missed approach altitude on this approach is indicated here on the Jeppesen chart, and it says at or below 3,000 feet initially. So you could see if we left 4,000 feet there and then tower instructs us to go around and we climb to 4,000, we've just violated an altitude constraint and we can get a phone number from air traffic control and a pilot deviation. So remember, once you do get that glide slope star, that you do come back to your FCU and set missed approach altitude. So we'll unpause. I've got 3,000 set here. And look at that. We're approaching 1,000 feet and we are stable. We are config full. Landing gear is One down. Point. Our approach speed is v, v at plus 20 and decreasing. So we are well within parameters of a stable approach. And we can go ahead and continue to land the airplane from this position. That's going to wrap up this video. I know it was a lot of information. Hopefully putting some overlays on the screen will help you if you're taking notes or what have you. But again, remember, the whole purpose of this video is to give you the tools necessary to successfully complete a glide slope capture from above. Remember, you've got your vertical speed between 1,500 and 2,000 feet per minute. Make sure the airplane is already in config 2 or 3, depending on the situation, and make sure you're already at a safe speed to continue conduct this technique between that 180 to 160 knot mark before even attempting to slow down and go down. Sometimes it happens in real life. Sometimes it happens in VATSIM. Hopefully the next time it happens to you, you now have the tools and will be able to execute a glide slope from above capture. Until next time, guys, I'm V1. Stay safe. See ya.